and run BT. Oh yes, there we go. Welcome one and welcome all to this Good Friday, even though it's going to be a long one. So let's start this film with Bob Hoskins and Helen Mirren. How is everyone this evening? Is there anyone here that hasn't seen this film? Some old star cast of British actors from back in the day. <laughs> Jimmy's here. Oh dear, he's not seen it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Myers. Bit of fun. Might do it for a few more of these things. <laughs> I am, Mike. Hope you are too. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> no one's seen this. Uh, let's have a look at listen to the music while we're up. Got an epic soundtrack. If so, has anyone actually seen this? Disgusting. Ending Mob Master, the film no one's ever seen. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy it after I've ruined it for you. So here we go, the story's starting. Now, none of this. First 10 minutes makes any sense until the last, well, till, till the ending. So it sort of comes back on itself. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the prequel, that Friday. But, so the, there's a deal. Someone's being picked up on the airport. And then there's something hidden in the suitcase. What could it be? It's cash. Very big money, because money in the UK was about this big back then. So I did find out, was it yesterday? Oh, so there's um, Paul Freeman of uh, Raiders fame. And um, Hot Fuzz. Well, there we go. So we get a smoke <laughs> back when pubs were full of smoke and you couldn't see the other side of the room. Doctor Impossible is here. See, he's seen a great film. Thank you, Doctor. Someone's seen it. <laughs> yes, I did play a little bit, but if any more than that, we'd have been off in a hurry. Now, who's that eyebrows actor? He's one that went on to be famous. It's um, Tim McNally, is it? Um, and Ali. he's in the Pirates films as the uh, got the big bushy beard and Captain Jack's right hand man. But I mean, because I've only seen this a few times, but then I can never remember why this beginning affects everything that goes on. But we will see a young James Bond in this, among others. This is Bob Hoskins' breakout role. This is the one that got him other stuff and then got him noticed by Michael Caine. That's why this, they did what the director, Bob Hoskins, and Michael Caine did Mona Lisa. So you got Paul Freeman with his perm. No. The fact that um, straight into a cuddle. Two men cuddling. I'm sure it's just platonic. Don't read everything into it. But this is, unfortunately, this is a re release. So it doesn't have the best poster. Plus, it was two for 15 quid. Oh, but there you go. There's um, Helen Mirren's in it. Now, when she signed on, she didn't want to be the gangster's mole. So she's basically in charge of the organization as much as Bob Hoskins is. But, yeah, showing some violence on the back. But this actually was filmed in 1979. 
I'm trying to work out what happens here. So yeah, the money gets stolen. And things happen here. But yeah, they get attacked by the same guys in black. And I've put into this car. All will be revealed later on. But as hopefully everyone's <laughs> Jim's here. Hi Jim. How are you doing? You got booze as well. A nice beer. What is this? Pinker's IPA. Oh yeah, there's an old BMW. So yeah, this was released. 40, what did I say? And it's not on the title. 1981, March 29th. So it was, must have been a good Friday as well, maybe. So this, but it was actually, took two years to release because it was going to be a TV movie. And then uh, with Lou Grade from ITC. And then he uh, didn't do it. And was it uh, Handmade Films, which is, George Harrison, it's of the Beatles com film company, made it. But I think it upset George because of the violence in it, which there is a glassing later on, or a bottling, I should say. But we shall see. Yeah, so these two are left for dead. I think one of them's just a taxi driver, which comes into play later. So there we go, there's the coffin. Doesn't say which train station it is. Probably Paddington. Golden the noun. The old trains, but they're probably still using. So yeah, I watched Raiders earlier, which also has Paul Freeman in. Uh now, the long Good Friday. So Good Friday has very little to do with the actual film. It's just about... I don't know. I couldn't work it out because it does happen on Good Friday, but there were other names for this film before that. Oh, there's Razors, who's in... He's in Lock, Stock and Sue Smoking Barrels, and then Alan Ford Bricktop is in uh, Snatch. Hello, Echo. How are you? Nice to see you. Or see your icon. And we get Charlie from uh, Casualty. So it's the actor on the left with the other perm, who was in a TV show called Casualty that's been running on the BBC since about 85. And he was one of the main characters for a long time. So, yeah, they nearly, <laughs> they nearly dubbed Paul Bob Oskin's voiceover. For the American version, but luckily not. He threw his toys out, luckily, and uh, told them no, which he was very right about. Now, if anyone's heard of Canary Wharf, that's outside of the UK, it's when the Docklands, which was a wasteland in the 80s in London, was transformed into a business district, and it's a very valuable one now, but back when this was made, it was just... Docklands, as it says, that were never used. Oh, there's a Ford Granada there. Looks brand new. Very nice. Almost looks like a Mustang. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. No, it's not a prequel to The Long Kiss Goodnight. Oh, oh, that's why she spits on Charlie. See? It's all coming out. There's Concord, which, of course, was running from the 60s all the way up to the 90s. And we haven't had anything similar since. Yeah, every time I went to Google it, I always put the long kiss goodnight. I thought, why am I seeing fucking uh, Ronnie Harlan film? That's not Bob Hoskins. Uh, Richard Longcrane's thriller, Bellman and True, follows The Long Good Friday. Both films are very watchable. Bellman had the late, great Derek Newmark. See, Bellman True, I need to watch that. It's not on my list from you already, Dr. Impossible. <laughs> Evening, you slags. Yeah, there he is. So Bob Hoskins makes an appearance a ten, uh, nine minutes in. <laughs> in a lovely suit. Don't know if we're going to hear any of his banter. It's good to talk. So, yeah, so 
Ah, see, now it's all coming. Now I've seen it. It's all in my head, and I can know what's happening. Because it all makes no sense what's happened for the first 10 minutes. Because Bob Hoskins has been away to America to set up a deal with the Mafia in America to help fund his business empire at bringing the Docklands into the future. I think it took a long time because it was still <laughs> a while away. If I'd known Charlie Fairhead was in this, I would have checked it out years ago. <laughs> you... <laughs> Spoilers for him, but it doesn't end well. <laughs> but it is a British gangster film. Uh, but yeah, you get to see all these shots of London when they're complaining about how busy it is. And there's not a car on the bloody road. But of course, Bob Hoskins rides around in a roller and has a boat. But he don't want to go swimming in there. And there is... Forgotten her name. Ellen Mirren. She of uh, Caligula fame. And unfortunately, there is a shower scene in this film. But it is not uh, with Helen Mirren. It's Bob Hoskins. And he gets a lot of soaping going on. But maybe you like that sort of thing. Charlie does not go in the, uh, the shower. <laughs> it is the <laughs> well, like I said, this is filmed in seventy nine. When was Caligula? <laughs> uh, that was late seventies, wasn't it? Hang on. <laughs> yeah, Helen Mirren Caligula. What more do you want? Or Helen Mirren the Queen? Ah, uh, where are we? Just gotta scroll all the way back through her stuff because she's done so much. Seventy six. Uh, play the month. Play the time. I keep. 79, Kligler, the same year. And she was a stewardess. Technically was 81. Uh, April 2nd, 82 in America. It was 80 in Cannes and Edinburgh Film Festival and the BFI. Had its London premiere February 26, 1981. And then full release 29th of May, uh, March 1981. So there you go. Also known as The Long Good Friday. Or a, in Brazil, a Noat do Terror. Where's the professor? I need this help. Yeah, so <laughs> lay off the fog. So he makes himself a nice heavy drink. So, yes, Helen Mirren is the right hand man or whammon. <laughs> That's for my charm before the skyscrapers. <laughs> uh, I'm just pausing. Gonna... But there was a lot of famous British actors in this that look very young. Ah, uh, there's Sean. Good old Bob Hoskins plays some great characters. Though to me, I'll always think of Eddie Valiant. I was think every time I think of him, is Eddie Valiant. I know he was in Hook, and uh, he's a right hard man in this. I'm trying to think what else he did in the eighties. All right, there's his dear old mum is in. <laughs> so this is Bob Hoskins' his driver who's taking his dear old mum to church on Good Friday, so she can kiss the feet of a statue. They're at least wiping it slightly. Um, yeah, Bob Hoskins. Yeah, so it was only Kevin McNally, not something else I said. Ah, there's, is that Paul Freeman or is that Stuntman? Probably a Stuntman, got to be. Yeah, sadly, it's been 10 years since we lost Bob Hoskins. Um, yeah, Snow White and the Huntsman was his last film. But if he wasn't getting money from BT in the 80s, yeah, he, he was in a lot of British television up until this. Then, he, yeah, Pennies from Heaven was, uh, I remember that, on six episodes in 1978. Oh, I don't remember the re-release. Zulu Dawn. He just finished Zulu Dawn uh, when he came to do this one. I don't think I've ever seen Zulu Dawn. He was almost the DeVito de role in Romance in the Stone, I think. Ah, there you go, makes sense. He's in... Pink Floyd's rock and uh, Pink Floyd's the Wall as the rock and roll manager. So uh, where is it? There's Pierce Brosnan. 
Future Bond and Future Remington Steel. Lassiter, he's in with Magnum in 84, Cotton Club. So, yeah, he was slowly in a lot of flops. He was in Lassiter, Cotton Club, and Brazil, all in a row. But Sweet Liberty, I, ah, I remember him from Sweet Liberty with Michael Caine. And he did that and Mona Lisa in 1986, A Prayer for the Dying, as a father, Michael da Costa. But yeah, then it was 1988, he did Who Framed Roger Rabbit and The Raggedy Rawney. I think The Raggedy Rawney's got, is that Dexter Fletcher? Yes, who is also in this as some cockney kid that's threatening his car. <laughs> who can forget? Uh, heart Condition. Then he was banging... Share in Mermaid in 1990, and then he was Shattered in 1991 as a private eye. It was a pretty good film. Then Hook, he was Smee in 1981, and then Blue Ice, Michael Caine as well. And yeah, you know, there we go, we got up to that. Um, a few others. Where's the, I, I, there? Are Super Mario Bros. 1993, which I think he only did for his kids. Celebration, oi, come here. Oh, didn't he almost play Buster as well? He would have been better for Buster, but I don't know if I want him singing the song to the film. <laughs> I've actually seen Blue Eyes. It's really crap. That's what the general consensus is. Now, I remember when that came out, people were saying, uh, is it a reference to the frozen blue toilet water that falls from airplanes <laughs> when they're at a great height and dump their loads, as it were? Why don't I look up the trivia for him? Um, dropping out of school at 15, he worked odd jobs, was a fire eater at circus, did not start acting till he was 26. Uh, claimed he has never taken an acting lesson in his life and believes in his talent to be all natural. Uh, began acting career in 1969. Described himself as a five foot six and cubic. And his face like a squash cabbage. I forgot he was in um, Enemy at the Gates as well. Oh, he was uh, Smee at, in Hook and Neverland. Neverland, not Never Neverland. Mona Lisa is another one. I, I still haven't seen that. I really need to. <laughs> Fucking hell. I can't even remember. One I've, second of back in Spice World. Jim, you bastard. There you go. It isn't Blue Eyes the name for the shit that falls from the sky. There we go. That's what I heard as well. Yeah, he was going to get the uh, Capone role in The Untouchables. But when Robert De Niro became available, he got a six-figure paycheck for being a great standby. Worked as a porter, lorry driver, and window cleaner before discovering acting. He remains... Ah, it was original choice to play Buster Edwards in Buster... But the filmmakers decided the role of a Cockney villain was too close to the roles of Long Good Friday and Mona Lisa. Oh, there's Pierce Brosnan playing with himself to attempt Paul Freeman. Adopted an American accent for the role of Eddie Valiant in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He didn't go the old uh, Sean Connery style on that one. Yes, I remember Jet, uh, Unleashed for Jet Li, or Danny the Dog or whatever it's called. But yes, he's a white villain in that. He was in the music video Stella by JT. <laughs> I don't know. That. I probably know the song if I heard it, but I don't know who Jamie T is. <laughs> don't think we should. He would get much interest on Tinder with that description. Uh, maybe that's why I'm failing. So, oh, hang on. There's a shower scene again. This is uh, Pierce Brosnan in the shower scene. So you get Pierce Brosnan first, and then a hairy Bob Hoskins layer. Replaced Danny DeVito as Mario Mario in Super Mario Brothers. Uh, he's appeared in one film that has been selected for the National Film Registry, and that was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Turned down the role of L Harry in Home Alone. Always like Phil and Buster. Anyway, he should have done more. Oh, and Paul Freeman's been stabbed by two guys in the showers, and it's not a prison. And then they just chuck him half in the pool. Ranked... Uh, 97 in Empire's Top 100 Movie Stars of All Time, from October 1997. Was considered for the role of Penguin in Danny DeVito, in Batman Returns. 
and were considered for the role of Mar Maroni in Dark Knight. That went to Eric Roberts. Oh, oh in 1980. Oh, there we go. Some of the guys might remember this. In 1983, Hoskin was the voice used in the advert for Weetabix. And during the late 80s and early 90s, he appeared in advertising for the recently privatized companies of British Gas and British Telecom. I remember that. There you go. So, here, oh, there you go. Boom. Now, who in the 80s do we know that used bombs a lot in London? I think that I was, uh, I was in London once and there was a bomb scare. So, we were on the tube train. It was coming into the station. The doors opened, people started getting out, and then it was ee, 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 alert, alert, alert. Everyone jumped on <laughs> the train, the door shot, and it died away. That's as close as I got to the troubles. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit is such a gem of a film, exactly. It, the fact they got Disney and Warner Brothers cartoons together, even though Bugs and Mickey Mouse had to be equal. That's definitely an awesome film. Hawkins was. Later rest in the pot, high great cemetery, not too far away from Jeremy Beadle. I still think this is Hoskins' best performance. Oh yeah. Wow, he's doing a little speech now. It's I don't know if you can hear this. <laughs> I wouldn't piss him off. Worst film tied for Super Mario and Spice World, then. Oh, I definitely watched Super Mario with Spice World again. <laughs> the horrors. Hey, there's Pete. How are you doing, Pete? Uh, one of the best British films of all time. This one. See, this is from a young fella as well. So they don't often get it right, but Pete does. Lloyd as Judge Doom was the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, the fact he killed a cartoon. Um. Was considered for the role of Doctor Octopus in Spider-Man Two. Some of these considered by or everyone gets yeah. So they used considered for Ralph in Romance in the Stone, in the Avatar. Uh, sorry, The Aviator, before Alan Alda was cast. His father was a communist, and he was brought Hoskins up to be an atheist. So in 1967, age 25, Hoskins spent a short period of time volunteering in uh, Israel and also herded camels in Syria. The man got around, didn't he? But here we go. So this is where the American gangsters turn up. And he has to show them what he wants. Oh, there was a bit of a goof there where he's walking along the side of the ship and he, he's holding a champagne in one bottle and a cigarette in the other because there's a lot of smoking in this film. And he uh, elbow nodged the door handle and he spilled some drink and he went and just carried on like a pro. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Hoskins is a Bond villain. I'm trying to think, he could have. I guess he could have been the media mogul in. Uh, but then he could have been quite. He probably could have beaten Roger Moore up in this area. So, yeah, we've got... Uh, what have we got? Live and Let Die on Monday night. Bank Holiday Bond. Did you ever see the honorary console with Richard Gere and Michael Caine? Now, that rings a bell. I always confuse that. Um, with um, If it's the one where it's a group of uh, people that were raised to rule the world or something. And then Michael Caine uh, disbands it or finishes it by the end. I don't remember Richard Gere in it, but maybe I'm thinking of the wrong one. Uh, Name in Vain Productions. Good evening. I watch my VHS copy of Long Good Friday every year. It's an Easter movie the same way Die Hard is a Christmas movie. <laughs> exactly. There's no Easter references in this apart from the church service. His mum was nearly blown up. And then <laughs> she's gone into the Hospital, bless her. And uh, so, yeah, was, I'm not going to bother with you considered, but he was first choice for Pop Larking in the Darling Buds of May. So that was there. Uh, but then Jason, David Jason got the part. Because, yeah, he can do warm and cuddly very well. 
I'm not going to bother. Oh, he was. <laughs> uh, I thought that was something else. Born on a... That makes no sense. So, yes. Helen Mirren worked for him twice in Last Orders in 2001. And she's the one that wrote his obituary for the newspaper. And his trademarks are gravelly voice and strong Cockney accent, which is new. What was the one he did with them? That was Heart Condition, where... Uh, yeah, he's a racist that gets Denzel Washington's spirit and guidance. It's one I saw in the cinema, that one. But <laughs> you'd think it'd be... Um... Oh, there you go. So he's just found out Paul Freeman's gone. And he's broke a glass in his paws. <laughs> this diabolical liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, he's on the phone. It's good to talk. I wonder if he got all his phone calls for free. Yes. <laughs> Glenn Close with a moustache. <laughs> Does she get thrown overboard or just put in a barrel? I can't remember. I tried to like Hook so much, but unfortunately, I like it less each time. <laughs> uh, that's the one I was thinking of Critical Condition, that's Richard Pryor one. I, I do love Critical Condition too Richard Pryor's in charge of a hospital <laughs> but then he comes the hero when the power's out, there's a killer on the loose <laughs> but yeah it's fun times I know it's probably not the funniest film ever but it's the same as um Bruce's Millions, another one I like. Because has anyone seen that uh, Rodney Dangerfield one? Um, Easy Money. That I thought that was going to be like Bruce's Millions, but it's not. Because it's like, to inherit 10 million, he has to be, get clean in his life. But So you think it's going to be fun. <laughs> but it wasn't. Oh, can't stand Hook Addy. I don't think I've ever got all the way through it. Well, it's another one that's... <laughs> Yeah, I saw Hook in the cinema, and I also had all these uh, bad reviews, and it was being... But yeah. Oh, is that a nice Cortina? <laughs> it's weird looking, seeing all these old cars looking brand new. <laughs> Ronnie Danger feels bloody awful. He is a desired... Uh, uh, not desired taste. He is one that... Yeah, I'm trying to think. I I saw I can't um, what did I see him in. I don't mind him. I don't mind his shtick. <laughs> but yeah, but <laughs> blast me. You've upset Sean. Great. I love Hook, especially Hoffman is catching Hook. But Hoffman is the one that does save it for me. Because um Robin Williams isn't Robin Williams until like the final act. Looks nothing like Paul Freeman. But here we go. We got the uh, some great uh, quotes coming up because uh, they're hiding the body, so they have to put it in the freezer. And of course, he says, "What is it? They kept it all cognito. They're going to collect a body in an ice cream van." <laughs> and then Arrow says, "That's a lot of dignity in that, isn't it?" Going out like a raspberry ripple. He just plays Rodney Dangerfield. Apart from, what was it? Natural Born Killers. He's a right bastard in that, but maybe he was a bastard in real life. I did my national service with Colin. We did six months in the glass house together. Yeah, so some of this. Glenn Wellman. But yeah, he does just play Rodney Dangerfield. Like in, uh, was it Caddyshack? Uh, back to school. Back to school is the one I know in the, the, the most. Uh, BBC One used to show Critical Condition minus his F bombs. His films are never good. <laughs> that was certain someone to play off. Well, yeah, I guess he's got John Candy and Bruce's Millions and Rick Moranis. But yeah. 
He didn't have much to do in critical condition. But yeah, I guess. <laughs> It's about to get a lot worse for Bob Hoskins. Or is it Harold? Harold? Can't read the review on this. It's the best British gangster film ever, says Screen International. Ingenious, imaginative, and tremendously exciting, says the Daily Express. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, do check it out before I ruin it. It's two hours long. Eddie Constantine as Charlie. But yeah, half of... But, uh, what's his face? is. Richard Price act is swearing. Mike, keep it up and Gareth. I'll make Gareth make you watch the Evil Dead trilogy. <laughs> Ooh, can we? I got it. I got the first two handy. If you want to go start tonight, yeah. Because what is it? Well, that's the edited version. So it's eighty-five minutes and ninety minutes. So if you've got time, I can't go in the loft to get the uh, third one. But... <laughs> Looks like it's a tease for it. It's pretty much the only ga <laughs> real British gangster movie ever. I did think that when I... Because I'm trying to think the craze with the Spandau Ballet Brothers. That's pretty good. There's nothing as good as this. There's that big money again. It could be a pound, but it's the size of a newspaper. Um... If you're running, if you're running at all, give me a bell. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to think of other ones that don't involve the Essex boys and the shooting of a Land Rover. But yeah, I guess layer cake, maybe. I guess snatch stock. I'm going to have to rearrange my display tomorrow because this is the last of my March. And I haven't, I guess, sports videos, sport films. But there's not many fun ones that I have, apart from... Major League and Basketball. Ah, Sexy Beast, of course. That's definitely a British gangster film. That's a good one. Effing and Blinding on that one. The craze okay, but nothing spectacular. I got Blakey in it. <laughs> yeah, the last... I remember the craze when it came out. It was all the business. But yeah, people saying it was the best. Oh yeah, they found this bomb in the, his casino. But it never went off because the wire got disconnected. Whether that doesn't say if it's on purpose or not, because a bomb does go off later, but they just leave it on the table and then carry it around when some kid might. Uh, oh, Bullet Boy is the 20th century, 21st century London gangster movie, more Top Boy than Nonsock. I've heard of Top Boy, I don't know, I've heard of Bullet Boy. Hmm. Gangster number one, that's what I was trying to think of as well. I have never seen it, so because gangster films aren't my forte, but there are some, of course, I like. Parky meeting George, King George V. He's put a story of the bomb in the car was a gas leak. <laughs> we'll use that again later. Sexy Beast. See, there's been a few, I guess. Rise of the Foot Shoulders. Isn't there about six or seven of those now? Ben Kingsley should have won Oscar for his performance in Sexy Beast. Yes. You go from Gandhi to Sexy Beast. There's a fucking new term. <laughs> Guy was a villain in that. Um, or the, what is it? The Love Guru. He's in that, isn't he? Don't remember much about Sexy Beast. <laughs> Except Ben Kingsley kicking off a lot. Exactly. That's the, everyone remembers him kicking off or the sunburn on that. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Right, so more shots of London. Don Logan. Ah, one of the best gang British gangster characters ever. Get Carter, of course. The uh, Stallone film. Hang on, we're getting visitors. Watch the cable. Ah, you going to say it all? Bedtime, bedtime. You going to watch this? The Long Good Friday? No. No. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins, yes. What? <laughs> Get to bed. Lock that door. Yeah, Skate Carter, that's a 
Nice to see old Newcastle. Uh, oh, the Italian job. Now, is that a gangster film? Or is it a heist film? I know there's gangsters involved with right? them. Um, there's a there's a lighted to do meet you, dear boy. The gangster that's in prison. So yeah, there's a lot of coppers in this that are in his pocket. So there was a couple on the boat earlier. And they got this one now. But who am I to say what they're up to? I'm sure that's legit. <laughs> that's it. I was trying to think who was in Gangster Number One. Was it Paul Bettany? I thought it was that other guy that looks like Paul Bettany. But yeah, both of them were around the right age at that point. Ah, he was. That's it. Oh, I wonder why I never. Is that his breakout role? Oh, there's a nice jag. It could be the equalizer. It's a black jag rolling past. Is Bob here tonight? To even come up with a sniff of villainy. How about Tottenham? They can't even nick car batteries without getting electrocuted. <laughs> there might be some uh, racist stuff from Bob Haskins in this one, especially later on. Uh, Richard Burton in EMI's Villain. I'm not a great fan of the film, but some people love it. I don't know if it's Richard Burton as a villain. Malcolm McDowell was also in Gangster Number One, yes. There's not many British films he's not in. Put him on the missing persons list. That should hold off for a while. <laughs> so, yeah, this policeman gets offered shares in what will be. Although, um, the doc, when the Docklands got transformed in Canary Wharf, I don't think many people moved in at first. Now, you can't move for people up there, but. I think people, there was no real tr transport to it. But now it's got underground, trains, buses, taxis, Ubers, electric scooters. No excuses. Not seen villain, but remember the video cover. No, it's not ringing a bell for me. Now let's have a look at the video cover, like you say. It might be one I passed in the aisles. Um, if I spell villain, not villain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks, does look familiar. Well, it's just... It's only got um, Bill Murray on the front, but... Focus. Does look at EMI, as you see. No way out. <laughs> any racist language should be censored for the modern wilderness. I demand it. Yes, I'm going to cut it out of this film, so uh, that was fun film. But yes, he goes to the he goes to a uh, certain area of London and slates it for ages and says it used to be a nice place <laughs> and harasses and hurts a lot of people. Oh, here we go. There, this is the first stop. <laughs> Raises a little bit of respect here, I think. So yeah, <laughs> he drops a car on the bastard. <laughs> There you go, there you go. Uh, sorry, mouse is slipping. I think the VHS cover was just Burton's face. Yes, in red or orange. What about the crime game? Is that a gangster film? See, it's one I've never seen. I don't like people looking at my nose when I'm talking to them. He could have killed me. That's the way it's been going today. <laughs> but yeah. Now, which one's Errol's house? Here we go. Um... This used to be a nice street. This, decent families, <laughs> no scum. While well, there's a certain demographic in the coming out to see what's going on. <laughs> Although, wish my hair would hold a pencil in it. So, yeah, and we get um, some TNA. Oh, sorry. I'll take this off. Ah, you can't see anything, can you? Um, so, you got the guy from Only Fools and Horses, the token black guy in that. <laughs> are you in training or are you doing this for your pleasure booze been some pox eh Harold get him to take that metal out of my ear <laughs> let's put some muck on the ceiling <laughs> long good Friday remake starring Gareth and Mike I'll be up for that 
Mike can be the Paul Freeman character that gets stabbed in the showers. I want verbals with you. <laughs> oh, you use the term verbals a lot in this. Oh, he spotted something. And it's a... She's oh, she's the lower that tit out. Is it? Yeah, they're doing syringes. He's not happy. There you go, some boobs for you if you want. There was there, well, the guy who wrote this did write a sequel. Give yourself another prick. So he's got sarspar a ju big jug of sarsaparilla. There was a sequel, but the, the writer said he glad it didn't get made because it would have spoiled the first one. Because technically it is open-ended, what happens. <laughs> that is correct. Jillian Telforth is in this. There's two EastEnders people in this. Oh, so he's called Razors because he's got three large gaps, 65 inches of stitches. And then he's going to cut this guy. But yes, Jillian, there's two uh, people from EastEnders. I can't remember the other person. Because Jillian Telforth is in it because... One of her relations couldn't make it. She'll be up in earlier. Um, so, yeah, for his performance, Bob Hoskins received a fan letter from notorious London gangster Ronald Cray. So Dame Helen Mirren, uncle, was George Dawson, was a London gangster. The first credited theatrical movie of Pierce Brosnan, who's called the first Irish man. <laughs> she's still fit. Well, you like her in this, then. She wears very tight jeans. <laughs> Kathy fucking Beale, yes. <laughs> Rewatched Train Spotting last night. Still holds up. I remember that film when it came out. Massive when I was young. It was too, oh, massive. I was too young to see it, but I remember hearing the soundtrack everywhere. Yeah, the soundtrack's awesome. It's got about two soundtracks, I think. But yeah, it's one I saw back in the day because it was everywhere. PT8, that's it, directed an incredible heist film called The Great Train Robbery, Sandy Baxter and Frank Finley. Really effective thriller, tight, watertight ending. Never put it out on there. Never put it out via network, but yeah. Fucking, I can't read now. Yes, because it's not the first Great Train Robbery, which is directed by Michael Crichton and starring Sean Connery. And um, what's that dancer, ballet dancer that was in everything? Is that the American Werewolf? It is. Alan Ford is in this again. He turns up later. So far, uh, <laughs> this other guy's holding on to his nadgers because he's naked for his entire scene time. The original title was The Paddy Factor, which is a spoiler. Uh, then it was Harold Kingdom, Havoc, Citadel of Blood, And it was called The Long Good Friday. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Milf material. <laughs> well, she must be 60s in now, isn't she? Always like Gilf. Hey, Tommy Gun. <laughs> Doing God's work again. Ah, uh, see someone else's fan. Oh, right, here it is now. Yes. The little kid with the black t shirt. That is Dexter Fletcher. Or is it? No, it's the little kid in front. They all look the same with their 70s hairstyle. But yeah, little. I can only see the other one. But yeah, it's the little Dexter Fletcher getting a 50 Bob and Bob Hoskins, remembering that that's how he used to be as a child. They did well to see that title. It definitely would have aged badly, despite being a spoiler. This is number 21 of the British Film Institute's top 100 British films of the 20th century. Uh, Dexter Fletcher is the young lad protecting Harold's car. So he's appeared in Lock Stock, Two Smoking Barrels, with the guy that plays Razors here, who is P.H. Moriarty. And da -da -da -da. Bob Hoskins didn't work for a year after he appeared in this movie. Doesn't say why. Uh, this film is part of the Criterion Collection, spine number 26. So, yeah, there's two scenes that came out of the writer's life. Oh, here we go. Not, not dog shit on the doorstep, as he refers to the people living on the street now. 
Hang on. I need to. There's something else he says. Where is it? He looks around, disgusted, even though they can't see anything wrong. These people deserve something better than this. There's nothing wrong with the place. <laughs> well, he's an old racist. So, yeah, the, wi the, wi uh, the widow lifting her veil and spitting in the guy's face, and the guy that was nailed to a warehouse floor, which will be coming up. <laughs> oh, come out. Oh, yes, Chiron Columbus. I still have that in my list to watch, but I never have yet. Yeah, so Harold Shrand Chan, was supposed to be an embodiment of Thatcher's Britain for cash, uh, capitalism. In reality, Bob Hoskins was rabidly anti-Thatcher. Oh, best British film, surely. Don't look now. That was one. <laughs> That's the one I send out to bat for the Brits. <laughs> that is a good one. That is. You have no idea what's going on until later on, Helen. It's too late. Oh, and now, uh, what's her face? I can never remember. can't remember her name in this. Helen Mirren is wearing fur, for God's sakes. Yeah, so this movie's release was delayed. The movie was completed in 1979, but not released until 19, November 1980 on the competitive circuit. So the berth where Harold's boat is docked is West India Quay, which is now part of the Canary Wharf estate. And the role was written specifically for Bob. I see Carl Howman and Gillian Tailforth have uh, minor parts in this, and we're going to star in EastEnders. Bloody hell, EastEnders is going to be 40 years old next year. <laughs> it's not Caligula. <laughs> Disgusting. That's it. Wayne Sleep was in the Great British Train. Uh, the first Great British Train robbery. That's him. They use him as uh, does nipping and gets some keys, I think. Because he's limber. Now, here we go. They're gonna, they're taking the Americans out to a fancy pub. This is a very fancy pub, even for London standards. It's, yeah, it's got all this crystal, fine china. What is on the plates? Oh, it's a bowl of rice by the look of it on the plates, and then you gotta look at yeah, there is the outside, and boom, it, it's blown up because it was the whole building was a set, and then the director thought it was a real pub and went in it to have a drink, and of course it was only the middle floor, and the <laughs> that was done up, the lion and the unicorn, not the slug and lettuce, or what is it there? <laughs> Something in a handgun. E E EastEnders forty years old, strong, and it's still as cack as ever. Yeah, if you watch the old episodes, it's just there is zero drama compared to today. Every day now it's a stabbing, shooting, divorce, murder, f affair. But back then, just oh no, some kids nipped off with a twenty bar, twenty p whisper of my stall. What will the boss say? So, yeah, this was supposed to be uh, written for James Cagney if he were a Cockney. <laughs> it's just another gas leak. Let's explain that to them. This film was heavily censored TV presentation instead of a cinema release. Oh, intent headed for it. But, yeah, then George Harrison built the rights for 200 grand and then released it in the cinemas. And made films, but then it's a Paramount film on VHS from uh, yeah, so it's 1979 handmade films, brackets 1981. But it doesn't say when the packaging was, but judging by the packaging, it looks 2000s, yeah. So Bob Hoskins was offered the part when he was in hospital, he just returned from Seth Eftika, where he made Zulu Dawn and then contracted an intestinal worm. But yeah, a remake was announced in May 20, 2007. It came to nothing. Now, 
Writer Barry Keefe was a regular in the infamous Two Puddings public house in Stratford. And was based a lot of the characters on people he was introduced to in the pub. So yeah, uh, <laughs> Pierce Brosnan was amused that he had to audition for this role, even though there's no dialogue in the film. But he wasn't supposed to have any dialogue, but he does say hi in the shower earlier. He wasn't supposed to, so he had lived there. So it was, um, there you go, it's Kim Tailforth, was originally cast in the small role of Sherry. Unfortunately, striking airlines had left her stranded in USA, so she suggested her sister take the part instead, and that was the breakthrough. <laughs> I don't know, it's called a breakthrough, but maybe her first movie part, because she doesn't have much to do. But we'll have a look later. I can't remember the actor who dubbed over Hoskins' voice in this for the American Martyr. Yeah, well, he came from Wolverhampton. I think they tried to stop it, but he obviously did record it. It just says a Wolverhampton actor. But surely that'd be even harder for some <laughs> people to understand. I'm afraid the dinner's got a little bit burnt. Comedy to the end. <laughs> Dubbed him with another British guy, exactly. <laughs> From Wolverhampton, of all places. Hoskins was too nice a man to be convincing in the tough guy roles. He, he had the girl, but always seemed off to me somehow. Uh, well, he does have the one bit of violence in this, doesn't he? To Charlie from EastEnders, uh, Casualty. But then, oh, right, here we go. Alan Ford is about to make, is it Alan? Brit Top is about to make a, an appearance. Ten years from now, young girls will be bringing girls back whilst Gav watches Venus to this man cave. Ten years, it's going to be at least five, although two if he was a scouser. Yeah, Michael, American struggle with a solid London accent. Uh, well, yes, yeah, this train spotting filth. Um, what's another one? Flash Gordon. There's Bricktop. Uh, well, Choppers in the Boob. Harry and Pincers, whatever that means, both of them. Um, feel like Pesci had it diminutive, but also terrifying tough guy and thing down to a T. Yeah. Well, I watched him in that Rodney Dangerfield film the, last week. And uh, he's got an Elvis hairstyle in it, Joe Pesci does. It's, it's worth watching just for that. He's a tough guy in that as well, but a comedy tough guy. Did you see Mrs. Doubtfire the cinema? And did you have it on VHS back in the day? Yes and yes. That's a good one. I need to really watch that. Didn't they haven't they made it to a made it all musical? Mad Max, yes, they dubbed an Australian with an American for Mad Max. Because what is it? Mad Max came out. I can't remember if it came out at the same time as the Road Warrior. Or the Road Warrior came out first because they called it the Road Warrior in the US, but they didn't know who Mad Max, Mad Max was because the film hadn't been released properly. And then they wondered why Mad Max sounded American, but Mad Max Two sounded Australian. Oh, see, Bob Hoskins is loading a gun. I do like how they there's very little use of guns in this compared to an American gangster film. He's got they borrow the guns, I think, for this. And I gotta have the he says, right. Go out here, use these as threatening, don't but don't use them to shoot anyone and bring them back so they're all signed back in when you get back. Hey, there's Terrence. How are you, sir? So everyone vote for Cool and the Gang to get them in the uh, Hall of Fame. Hoskins has said that he threatened to sue Jack Gill, the producer of Friday over the dubbing. Yes, I think I'm not sure how that would work. But <laughs> Percy was a force to be reckoned with Gone Fishing. Yes, I love Gone Fishing. It's another one of those that's <laughs> not much of a comedy, but it's just to see uh, Danny Glover and Joe Pesci on a fishing trip and getting into scrapes. Evening, Terrence. Everyone's welcome, Terrence. 
Doctor, Michael, Terence, Jim, Doctor, 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 Doctor. Right, a screwdriver for me, a San Pellegrino. I think we should skip the fl <laughs> flamboy, flambe, considering the gas situation in London. <laughs> There you go. She's cigarette on a stick, and the gentleman offering to light it for her. But then Charlie does come on strong. Oh, see, we found one at Barry Norman light. <laughs> what a rare thing indeed. Hang on, let me just. No, oh, I was gonna say Halliwell's, but this is it's not Halliwell's. But let's check it anyway. Ah, what's the film called? Sci-fi short, war thriller. Is it a gangster have a section? Musicals, mystery noir, romance, political, family, experimental, drama. I'll check drama. Uh, goodbye, children. Goodbye, Lenin. Crime. Here we go. Let's go into crime. Goodfellas. Great train robbery. Okay. So it's not one of those films. Someone's stolen my Halliwells. <laughs> If I try and get it, uh, I'll probably turn the PC off, so I'm not going to bother. I don't think he would have much say in the dubbing. It would have been dubbed into loads of thousand overseas languages anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. But I guess for the Americans, it's very important. You don't want to offend them. Uh, Hostia took Barry Norman to a dodgy bar in East End, London, and folk there thought Norman was a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Baz a knife. Oh, now she spills the whole beer, whole thing they've been trying to cover up for ages. Why not? Barry gave a pot of review of something that wasn't art house. Yes. Uh, have you got any old cinema bootleg tapes? Be fun to watch along one of those with people running around in front of the screen. <laughs> I do need, I have a few pirate videos, I've never played them. I must, I always assumed they were their chess copies, but I should check to see if they are cinema ones. But it is always funny how piss poor the audio was because it's some guy with a cam in the back. Baron Ormerson famously never said, and why not? Indeed, that's it. It was Rory Bremner, and why not? We well, maybe said it. Once, maybe, but he never said it a lot. Maybe he was intimidated <laughs> into giving a good review. <laughs> you saying George Martin, uh, George Harrison threatened him. I remember he shat on Wayne's World, but the second one, <laughs> the Mads and Enigma. All right, got a band playing here, so yeah, this. Uh, We've gone from swanky, oh yeah, there they are, swanky restaurant to East End Pub. All right, we go over the, the Dolly Birds. There we go. So, what's the band that's playing? He hated hell raise which is just baffling. Well, yeah, it doesn't support British films, obviously. Uh, oh, did I disappear for a second? Remember seeing one of the Titanics with a few heads visible in front. So, yeah, people go to the toilet, the cameraman has to get out of the way. Barry Norman as a gangster, yes. God knows what Norman's father would have thought of that. Leslie Norman, the godfather. <laughs> Didn't, uh, oh, sorry. Didn't Barry Norman's daughter get into film reviewing? I can't remember now. Also had a large letter H floating around the screen for the whole three hours for some reason. <laughs> the hell was that from? Well, pirate used to have a brilliant copy of uh, the last action here where the pirates added their own titles at the start and misspelled Schwarzenegger. It's because they heard Barry Norman call him Schwarzenegger. It was awful but hilarious. Yeah, I guess 
looking back now, you can watch it in HD. It's for... <laughs> but if you rented it for the first time, off them. Still liked it more than Siskel and E, but yeah. Mainstream critics don't do horror, yes. Unless... Oh, now he's getting pished. Getting very handsy on the gangster's lady. Although, they, I don't know if they have a romantic thing. They seem to be more business partners than that. I think it doesn't really go into if they have a physical affair. They never forget physicalness. I watched a ton of BBC film over Christmas there, and some of his... Oh, BBC film, whatever, yeah. <laughs> some, yeah, some of his comments, he was very scathing. Um. Oh, uh, oh man, it's fun to have a few OG theatre boot tapes. Yeah. Uh, that's right, my daughter made a movie and he slated it on the show. Yeah, got to show no favorite handsome. Oh, I did think that, yes, I do look like Professor Farnsworth at the moment. What do you reckon? It's starting to slip back. Thank you, Ricky. Good evening. Uh, Derek Malcolm was set to replace Barry Norman after his move to Sky from the BBC, but Jonathan Ross pipped him to the post. Good old Wassy. Yeah, oh, no, don't laugh at him. That's a mug. Thinks he's an actor now because he's had one film. The other film hasn't been released yet, has it, Ricky? So very much watching last actually <laughs> on the cinema bootleg. <laughs> hmm. Although in the charity shop they sell uh, bootleg DVDs that I don't think they know. Even though the, the photocopying cover is pathetic, I don't know. Maybe they just think it's worth a few bob. Critics just say whatever they want to say. Uh, or do they? Or do they say what the studios want them to say now? John Thrush was glad he gave favor reviews to folk he interviewed. I do the same. That's why I've interviewed Ricky and I liked his film. Uh, Barry Review and Death Wish 3 is on YouTube. Uh, massively surprised he doesn't like it. Yeah. Uh. Yours, uh, yours will go too, Ricky. Don't worry. You've got bad genes. Yeah, all things considering. Slaying his own daughter's movie. Wow, what a pro. Guidance is called. I'm guessing he told her. It's not fucking... Something by... What's his not? Not James Dean. David Lean. Uh, here we go. We've got a tour of London at night. Very nice. We've got a double decker. Con hang on, I just realised this film is not widescreen at all. It's about the same format. Even on the Blu-ray. That reminds me, Don and Larry will be online and live at 11 p.m. British time. And also, the British clocks change 2 a.m. Sunday morning. So we go forward an hour, I believe. So this will be 10 p.m. this time uh, Sunday. So make sure you know what time we're doing Bond on uh, Monday. If you're from abroad. The best is Roger Elbert slacking off the three amigos while Chevy Chase is right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> pulling faces at him. Good for him. Or is it Ebert pulling faces? Like, for example, Batman Robin was meant to be a bad movie. It was, yes, it was meant to be uh, to sell toys. Right, this is where Charlie comes a lot, a bit strong to uh, Helen Mirren's furry bits. Derek Malcolm was about right. Terence uh, Malcolm was pretty critical but observant and knowledgeable. Ross was bottom line tosh. Yeah, I think they were going for a different demographic by the time Ross came into town. I think it was on Letterman Classic. Ah. Split second. There you go. Favorite London movie? Rutger Howard drinking coffee and killing. Is it an alien or is it a supernatural monster? We will get to that in May. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy anymore. I used to have two copies. I had Split Second and Wedlock on a double DVD, uh, double VHS, and got rid of both of them by accident, thinking I already got rid of it. Ah, I had a copy already, so I was getting rid of it. Idiot. Terence agrees with Doctor Impossible. 
Derek Malcolm was just not would <laughs> would not just get starry eyed at the, by the celebs. There you go. <laughs> Roger Ebert was a freaking idiot. Fucking idiot. Now, did he badmouth Spice World? Because that seems to be the split second is cool. Indeed, it is. I saw that in the cinema. As I say a lot on this channel, but I am old. What a dick. Three Amigos is awesome. Indeed, it is. All right, here we go. So this was Bob Hoskins' idea to have... Uh, so he round, gets his men to round up a load of the other gangsters that he has been keeping the peace with for like 20 years or whatever it's supposed to be. So then he hangs them all upside down in a meat locker, which was Bob Hoskins' idea. Yeah, the actor's idea to hang them upside down in a meat locker for the interrogation. So he does that. <laughs> and then lets them out. Let's has to let them go later when he finds out none of them were involved and give them a grand as a payoff, which I guess was a lot by then. Uh, I know the three megos is so good, it's been ripped off twice with Galaxy Twist, Galaxy Quest, and Tropic Thunder. <laughs> homage, I think it was sound. Homage. Kathy uh, be able to turn up in a minute in very tight jeans. She's very slim in this as well. Uh, you'll recognize her. I might see if I can get away with a full screen for a second because I don't think her part in the film is copyrighted. Love or respect. Oh, lost all respect for Ebert the second he refused speed too positively. <laughs> you got to pick a lane, hasn't he? I probably hated speed one. Right, what are we doing? Never mind. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Oh, it's after this bit. It's clever because they have these train uh, rails that come off the truck and then they can just take it all the way to the freezer. Oh, yeah. Pinky and Beals, my head. <laughs> well, that's the thing because if Dexter Fletcher's in this, he's only about 10. I don't know if Ian, Ian's a bit. Uh, not as old as Kathy. Uh, yes, and his positive reviews for Van Helsing and Cop and a Half. But what the fuck? Beverly Hills Cop is a thumbs down. Jillian. Uh, I did think of this. She is uh, Jillian Talfox is most famous for sucking off her fella in a lay by. That is true. She was was that in the nineties, like when she was peak famous on EastEnders. But nothing illegal about it. Was there? I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> the headline read <laughs> ruined. <laughs> Van Helsing isn't that bad. I hated it when it came out because I thought, what the fuck is this CJ mess? But compared to stuff now, it's quite entertaining. Plus, Kate Beckinsale. Cool. The only time I liked Cisco and Ebert is when they disagreed and fought. It might be the two grumpy old dudes on the Muppets. Yeah. I was like that uh, spoof in uh, The Simpsons. Well, your mother didn't think my flat was too creepy. That's Phil Mitchell. <laughs> Scandal. Didn't Phil Mitchell have a scandal of some sort too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sicily, but had a lot of power they could make or break a movie. But their show went out Thursday before the release. That is true. They did have too much power for making good films ruined. Uh, favorite actors? I think. Do we have a favorite actor? Jack Klugman. Um. Have a look at my horrors, but um, Edward Woodward, Christopher Lee, uh, Roy Scheider, uh, Donald Pleasance. Hang on, these are a lot of old guys. Uh, Tom Atkins, <laughs> Bruce Campbell. Don't mind George Clooney. 
But there's no one I just say, oh, I've got to watch this film. John Perry thought they were finished when <laughs> the Ace Venture review came out. Exactly. Sometimes the power of the people is more powerful. <laughs> Gillian Paul Class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Isabel Agini is the best. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I've got. I always like his films, but I just never watch them, which is a shame. But he is great. This is my film, so yeah. Signed by the director. See, look, to Gareth Yabba do Brian Levant. And he did jingle all the way as well because I was cheeky and asked for two. You know, my number one customer. Um, what was it yesterday? I got this one. I come in peace, says Matthias Hughes. Look out for VHS Ate My Brain 2 coming soon, <laughs> said James, which is also a sign. Oh, I've stuck it in there, so I kept falling out. Sid James is good. Yeah, anyone? <laughs> it's not really this anymore. I'm trying to think of. But these are all off VHS, so they're 20 years old before I start. Mm. Uh, I have many copies of Jaws DVD. Um, I actually have, I think, uh, oh, that's Jaws of Revenge. I got it. Oh, yeah, Jaws of Revenge is going to be. Jaws of Revenge is going to be a swimming pool in the garden. I got that Jaws, which is the single disc. Yeah, with the bonus material and the two disc special edition. I got three VHS of it. But yeah, both 12s because of the extras, I believe. I think the film is still a PG, but the extras make it a 12 for some bloody reason. I don't know if swearing. I know Hoskins troubled to find work in the industry after this film. Unbelievable. Think Mona Lisa just uh, popped up. Yes. What, um, he did say they didn't work for a year after this film. And then it was only small things. Uh, but then there's that Alan, uh, Alan Elder, Michael Caine film where they're making a film of some book, historian's book and they're getting it all wrong and he gets pissy. Siska uh, Lieber got so pissed when they weren't allowed to pre a preview. Instant bad review. Yeah. Obviously showing they had too much power. Uh, Isabel Argini <laughs> went through the ringer in possession. That's the one with Sam Neill, isn't it? Very odd film, isn't it? Hard to say it's a horror. They did champion a lot of indie films and even dedicate a whole show to Hoop Dreams, which is awesome. Oh, nice. The Garlic Gorillas here. I bet you have a... Don't, I don't have a copy of Class Reunion. I don't know if it got a release over here. I did watch it on TV. But I do like Class Reunion. <laughs> As a slasher spoof, but I like it more than never having a hand on a ready to. See, I prefer class reunion over student bodies. Sweet Liberty, thank you, Terence. Uh, I think they would default to a. 12 for Jaws nowadays. Anyway, you'd think so. Hang on, let me double check, because they used to play on a bloody Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon back in the day. I used to watch it, and I thought, they were chewing up on Paul Quint, and it's really gross. It still shocks me. But yes, Jaws the Revenge in the pool. Maybe I guess some red dye for that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on. Jaws. But, yeah. Hoop Dreams. I don't think I've ever seen Hoop Dreams. I keep confusing Hoop Dreams with that Kevin Bacon film where he trains that African tall guy to play basketball. <laughs> yes, yeah, Samuel, definitely love it. Yeah, I didn't like it when I first saw it, but her standing in the sun. Oh no, that's cat people. <laughs> her standing naked in the uh, the moonlight. That's cat people. Ignore that. All right. So this is where he gets physical in a bad way with Helen Mirren. 
a alphabet cat. It was going. It was going to end up on TV as a TV movie. They had to get it out of Lou Grade's hands and get it a cinematic release. I think Grade didn't like the RAA mentioning the film. Yes, they were going to cut a lot out of the film and water it down just to be a drama. I'm guessing by that way. Um, remember, oh yeah, Saturday the Fourteenth being pretty bad. That is a terrible film, but yes. <laughs> And they've got a sequel, though. Right, here we go. So this is showing a building full of bombs. I guess it's for demolition, because these are professional rather than the usual IRA ones they've been using. But stand by for Gillian Telforth. Yeah, <laughs> I watched it once. I've never seen the sequel, because that's just as bad. But yeah, how the hell do you mess up a... It's called Saturday the 14th, but it's nothing to do with taking the piss of Friday the 13th. There is Gillian Telforth. Turning up in a what is it, a Renault 5? Uh, hang on, let's get the full effect of her ash shot. No, oh, and she's got the old uh, scarf on her head, but she's in some very slim fitting tight jeans. <laughs> I don't know if we, he... oh, yeah, she lets the dog out, so somehow the dog is. In the the hut, the security guard's hut, and he's missing. So she follows this dog all the way around the place. Uh, I only found out today that Watership Down got moved from a U to a PG a few years back. I think the damage was done. That is such a horrible film <laughs> on all levels. Oof. The ratings are so stupid, they can't make their mind up on it. Yes, now that. Um, Mary Poppins is a PG now. Up in the air, that's it. Thank you, Michael Myers. <laughs> yes, I always confuse hoop dreams with that. Up in the... Or up. The air up there. No, it's definitely up in the air, I think. Nothing racist about that film at all. Definitely. Jaws is a 12. Has some strong stuff. The skinny dipping at the start, the pot smoking, and there's a few shit words and Quinn's death. Yeah. I don't know how it made onto daytime television back in the day. I don't. It wasn't edited, but I remember Quint being chewed up. You don't get the point. It's like U or PG really makes any difference. It's, yeah, it isn't. Oh, there she is. Oh, yeah. So they've <laughs> nailed this guy, crucified this guy to the floor of a warehouse. And then we get some acting on Telforth. Actually, gonna. Oh, I missed it. So, yeah. But yeah, you and PG, does anyone even look at that anymore? You say, oh, it's a PG, or you'll have a look at a 12, maybe. But So uh, I watched Ra Raiders with my son earlier. He paid no fucking attention to it. And the only thing he said that the ball rolling bit was the same as from a Ma Mario game. They used that same thing. And Jimmy Samuel's only proper acting credit was alongside Michael Barrymore in a series called Bob Martin. <laughs> oh, dear. I think he was in... There's a, um, a black and white 60s music film he's in, which I know the cinema snob did an episode of and said, oh, even he knew he was problematic. She does not get a lot of love with her husbands in Helen Mirren's first this, then click, and then Prince Philip. <laughs> but yes. Oh, both smoking now. Yes. <laughs> Sequel should have been called Sunday the 50th, exactly. Uh, missed opportunities. Of course, and Michael no, Michael Gambon will cut these and his wife and her lover. Yeah, that's a... I think I've only seen that once back in the day. Burnt cock is too much for me. I actually watched this in the Odeon Panton... Oh, and... Uh, Odeon Panton Street and its re release, which was around the time of the London Olympics. Oh, that's nice because, yeah, it would have been quite apt that a film about the doing up the Docklands <laughs> came out again. That's my favorite country. New Zealand, I think. It's a lovely place. You go from the top, which is sandy beaches and sunshine, and then to the bottom, and you can go skiing and everything. It's very nice. And the people are lovely. And it's got penguins and not penguins, whales and I don't know. Not penguins. 
Uh, look what George Harrison said about the film when Friday was picked for the summer release. Harrison said, uh, Harrison said he wouldn't have made the film at all due to its violence. I did read that. We think, I guess, what else handmade films do? They did um, Time Bandits with Nail and I. So, yeah. Not the sort of thing a beetle would be involved in, maybe. Oh, Play Dogs. Yes, that's the one I was trying to think of. It's, 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 yeah, if you want a fun night in, watch a... Oh, have a trilogy. When the Wind Blows, the Play Dogs, fucking Watership Down, remembering they're all kids' films. Jaws was on dating to you long, long ago, but was cut, obviously, yeah. So here we go. This is where we're an hour and 23 minutes in, and then we get the story of what's going on. So this is the woman that spat on Charlie from his casualty earlier. We didn't know why. But she, it was her husband that would, uh, drove the guys up to Ireland in his taxi for the meeting that went wrong. And he ended up getting killed. And Charlie kept it hidden from Bob Hoskins. And now he's just finding out about it. So he does. She knows, you're a bastard, Arrow Shand. A vicious bastard. <laughs> So it's all coming back. I bet he regretted Shanghai Surprise some more. <laughs> How could that film not make any money? Oh, kids are looking at the camera. Thank you, kids. Uh, and the Plague Dog was an air release, but it's a 12 now. There you go. What's it? Who was... Who was telling me about films they watched as <laughs> children? I guess it's uh, Schindler's Earth, Safe and Private Ryan, always put on in kids' classrooms. His favourite state is Louisiana. Uh, fucking swamps. I wanted bugs and gators. I wouldn't want them on the menu. Hi, Al. Uh, even the ratings now look shit. The 15 is basically the same colour as an 18. Yeah, I always see that thing. That Blu-ray, why is that an 18? It's a 15, it's just the colour's dark. Yeah, the play dog has animal experiments and the guy gets shot in the face. That's what I forgot about that. But yeah, despite what happens to the poor dogs, Robocop is the bomb. Yes, it is. Uh, Francis Monkman did a great score to this film. Yes, we'll be playing a bit of that at the ending. I don't think I can... I don't think there's any... So he calls it a corporation now because they're not gangsters. Uh, have you seen Age of Consent with Harold Mirren and James Mason? Wonderful, full frontal, <laughs> non-virginal Mirren. Good film, though. It is on my watch list, Dr. Possible. I have got it around somewhere. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it does have volcanoes and emus. So it, and when we visited, it was um, just after the Christchurch earthquake, so some of the buildings had big cracks in them, and we're being held up with stuff. Get him a decent stone. Send me the bill. <laughs> yeah, I think she said she wants £100 a week, which was probably a lot back then. Gotta love Fredonia. They represent the they represent is hilarious. Hang on. I don't get that. Mona Lisa. Yes, it's, unfortunately it's been mentioned and I still haven't seen it. Sorry. The Monty Pythons, of course. The Monty Python films. Because was he in one of them? George Harrison? I can't remember now. Uh, to... Have you seen Fel Felly Day? Have you fallen on your keyboard again, Al? I have heard of it, Doctor. I wonder why. <laughs> You're all sick people. Sick, sick, sick. Get off my channel. Uh, don't remember her actually getting that much out in Caligula. Well, which version is it? Because isn't there about five versions now? Definitely not the VHS. The VHS is 90 minutes. The Blu-ray, I think, was two and a half hours. But I don't think she does, because she probably thought it was a serious thing. I'm trying to think. There used to be a guarantee when she was in a film. Much like, who's that other lady in the 80s from uh, Castaway? It's... <laughs> It's a cat detective story. I liked it. Ah. Fairly, oh, fe oh, feline there. Yes, I see that. Uh, Terrence is giving a thumbs up. I did watch Watership Down when it was about seven on mental Betamax. I remember the rabbit fights were quite vicious and gory. Yes. I don't know what it was supposed to teach children, but 
not to watch the film or something. Hussey was another, not particularly good as a film, but Mirren likes showing her boobs and push off. Indicator delivers naked flesh and glorious 2K. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, she is known for showing stuff off more <laughs> backward. Talking Helen Mirren is the blue <laughs> clearly worth getting. If you want to be up to your arm in someone. A bit of trivia. Barry Norman put the long gone Friday on his top 10 list. For 81. Oh, we, we did something right. Oh, here we go. So uh, this is where... So, yeah, when I thought watched this night, I thought he kills him and he had nothing to do with that. what's going on. He was just getting set up. But he kept everything from Bob Hoskins and uh, <laughs> he messed up. But Bob does regret killing him in a minute when he uh, breaks a bottle and stabs it in his neck and, and then you see it go pissing blood. She doesn't get much out in red. Oh, <laughs> she is good in red. Her flirting with um, Hannibal Lecter himself, uh, who I can't think of. Brian Cox, not the. Uh, has have you got? I've got the Caligula three descent included in the very in your face version. <laughs> there you go. Definitely worth having. The uncut version of is hilarious. It's like they vandalized their own movie, showing dicks everywhere. <laughs> I bet. Oh, I put... What is this? Is it a depressing one, is it? Finish. Hang on, I can't spell now. Yeah. Oh, a lot of booze and smoking in this. Be line day. Is it just called cats? It's not coming up. I've got Melinda Clark. I've got a lot of Melinda's. How are you spelling that? B I got an N in mine. Turn that out. Ah, there you go. Oh, nineteen ninety four. A cat must investigate brutal murders of other cats in the neighborhood he has moved into with his owner. Sounds like fun. Uh, oh, it's a European film. Makes sense. But yes, suggested other likes of this are Play Dogs, Water Chip Down, Animal Farm. There we go. Uh, I forgot to say... Yeah, we'll get to that later, I think. So Amanda Donahue, that's it. I remember for the late uh, Lele Lodi. Is that the lady you're referring to from Castaway? That it is. Yes, Amanda Donahue was always known for getting her tits out. Uh, but I do like... I joined the Boy Scouts because of... Um, uh, what's it? The Lair of the White Worm. So she gave me a bath. Missed the 80s when family films had some edge to them. Yeah, it is. Like Raiders is... So, so people getting shot in the head and face and everything, uh, melting and blowing up. When the wind blows, it has to be one of the most upsetting ones I've seen. Exactly. And it's made it for kids. Oh, this bit's brutal when Bob loses. Yeah, he's just about to... So, yeah, it was something to do with to get things built. The contractor in the London was using Irish uh, builders. So, he had to pay money to the RA to use the union builders to build the stuff that, for the Docklands. And of course, someone, the one that was delivering the money, was skimmed five grand off the top of the 60 grand or whatever it is. And then that started the whole thing turning. And then he didn't tell Bob Hoskins about any of it. Caligula, we all know the reason most <laughs> of you watch it. Yes, I remember being advertised in uh, was it Video World magazine on the back page, usually. Caligula from <laughs> magazine. 
<laughs> doing stuff, but the UK, I need to check the UK version because I bet T is all you see. My favorite look of Helen Mirren was in Excalibur. Was she in armor than that one, clothed? We'll have to watch When the Wind Blows again. I don't remember it being that bad. Oh, it is depressing. You'll need to, something funny on after. It's German. Here you go. Feel, f- makes sense with that title. Feel in there. Excalibur is brilliant. Yeah, but the good old soundtrack to that downstairs on behind the final, or the main song anyway. Mm-hmm. Always watch Gligger just for the elaborate costumes and nuance. <laughs> if you've got three hours to spare, then. Oh, here he goes. It's kicking off. Because Colin's mine, man. It's down to me. Uh, I wonder if the VHS is cut, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you're not fooling anyone, Myers. Just found out about another handmade film called Bellman and True. Yes, about bank robbery, directed by Richard Lon Crane, shown on ITV in three episodes, but also available as a film. So, yeah, I think uh, Doctor Impossible mentioned that one to me uh, the other day when I was watching something. But yes, I'm going to annihilate them. But you can't. Just wait. Just, just, you just watch me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I like it for the cinematography. It's wonderful. And the music. The soundtrack, uh, the score is wonderful. I just had my eyes closed listening to the score. The British Army has been diving about with ship flying at them all angles for the last 10 years, and you're not impressed. Shut up, you slag. Uh, the look of excitement was all thanks to Alex Thompson, the guy who did incredible lighting cinematography in Leviathan. Oh, <laughs> is that the Leviathan? That Leviathan? What is it? Alex Thompson? I don't think it has DP on this. Editor, producer, story, screenplay. Now, producers. Oh, he stabbed him. He's down. <sighs> Oh dear. Ah, oh, I forgot to drop a thumbs up. Thank you, Terence. Are you live this weekend, Terence? Any news on the 4K caliber? Oh, that would look gorgeous, wouldn't it? If they do it right. To be fair, this main traction wasn't in the old UK video at all. A lot of people were very disappointed, I'd imagine, when they heard about Kligler, what it was the Americans got. Yep, there he is with a big wound in his neck. Nope, don't know. No 4K. They seem to polish a lot of turds on 4K releases, but forget the true gauge. Well, aren't we getting the uh, Nightmare on Street remake on 4K before any of the others? I think the best 4K I got reached was The Fugitive. Ah. Yeah, some of them do all right, don't they? Uh, George Felsenstein at one archive said that Expadabar is one title up for consideration for a 4K transfer. But that was last year. Yeah, things change. So get ready for Hoskins' uh, shower scene, everyone. Do you want it on full screen? The Future is a great movie and feels timeless too. It does actually. I watched it a few months ago. It still holds up. It does feel timeless indeed. Yes, Leviathan is awesome with Peter Weller. Yes. Uh, so that was it. Leviathan and Jaws of Revenge. I think that's two for the pool. Maybe Lake Placid if we get a nice summer. The US version of this apparently has Americanizations of some words like they did in the show. Shirley Valentine, yes. What we watched the other day. Oh, well, yeah. Snatch had some changes to it. Yeah. Um, Statham's character speaks differently, more posh. I'm not live for a while, just taking a wee break from it. But hopefully we'll be back soon. But can't say when. No worries. Uh, my favourite line from Leviathan is, if I hear you calling me Becky again, I'll pop your tops. <laughs> yeah, so the black guy, poor um, Ernie Hudson, makes it all the way to the end and then gets killed by the but he doesn't even get killed by the monster, does he? He's well, yeah, he gets he he, he gets the distraction so the other two can escape. 
How much demand can be there for an LC remake? Pretty much everyone hates it. Exactly. Is it just because it's the newest one? So it's right click and uh, upscale. So here we are. There's Bob Hoskins in his. It's going to be on this scene for a while now. Second site announced that they finished the new 4K transfer of The Hitcher. Ooh, yeah, really said that. That is a good film. Yeah, for those landscapes and everything. Might, uh, might be the best TV show remake of all time, along with The Untouchables. Yes, do love The Untouchables and uh, Flintstones. <laughs> Never seen Levine. Need to find it. Oh, definitely. Need to watch that before I do that. It's a, um, what does it say? It's basically the thing underwater, but they say it's alien underwater. What is it? Aliens thrill you, the fly shocked you, night experience real fair and Leviathan. But don't expect any TNA. Because it's Amanda Pays is the, the female in it. Well, one of them. But it's a good sci fi. Horror thriller. Derek Charman's blue is on full <laughs> for that one. Oh, that's gonna look gorgeous. No uh, scratches or uh, <laughs> grain or anything. Did you hear, guys? Not affects me. Uh, no. Dolan's next film might be the prisoner, based on the TV show. That would be interesting. I, I never liked the prisoner TV show. I did try and watch it a few times, but maybe I haven't seen it for 20 years, so maybe I've matured into it. If anyone's interested, the BBC Four documentary on the Long Good Friday, made in 2005, and it's up on YouTube. Bloody typical. Didn't turn up in a search I did when I was looking for stuff to talk about. But I won't come into the ending now. Where is he? So, yeah, this is where... He goes to the counselor to find out who <laughs> who to speak to on the Irish side. I heard that. I do love the prisoner, and that was not clean on the last remake they did with Jesus in it. Yes, I thought I was in my back of my mind. I thought, haven't they already done a newer version? Does the saint count? <laughs> that wasn't very good. Hmm. Ah. That was another one with production issues there, wasn't it? Oh, here we go. So yeah, they go into this he goes into this meeting and what's it do? It cuts to Harold. Yeah, cuts to the stock car racing. So you think he's gonna make penance? <laughs> it does count and it was kinda lame. Well, I've I'd put um, Double Team as a prisoner remake over whatever Jesus did. I think uh, I think of the song The Prisoner by Iron Maiden, which it's based on. Ah, okay. I can't say I've heard much Iron Maiden. Yes, the dodgy counselor. Yes, so he's gone to see the faceless dodgy counselor because you don't see the character. And then we get to this stock car race, I guess. They don't really do these anymore. So yeah, he's sitting in his lovely office with overlooking the place. And he's having a fine meal with some champagne. Val Kilmer did the saint instead of Batman and Robin. Sometimes I put the saint on just but the first half is better than the second half. You can't deal with these people. They're not interested in money. It's political. They're fanatics. Come on, George. <laughs> now this... I'm going to have to pay attention to the stream. Almost a double team. <laughs> that scene was totally right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> the Bat Saint or Batman and Robin. What a dilemma. So, <laughs> oh, Flaherty. This is Harold Shand. Now, I don't know what's going on here because the guy he needs to speak to is winning the stock car race. But then they must know they were going to turn up. Well, they have got a Batmobile, 60s Batmobile on there, but 
It's more of a Ford Escort turned into a 60 Batmobile. Yes, things are about to get nasty. But, yeah, because there's a snipe on the roof and it's aiming at Hoskins. So they were going to take him out. Because he looks like he's going to fire, but then Hoskins walks out of shot. So the sniper gives up. But I think that's the last time you see the sniper. Yes, the Sultan Seal. Uh, the Sultan Sea with Kilmer is very good. That is a good thriller. With tweakers. I suppose Star Trek, <laughs> Star Trek Wrath of Khan would be right up there. Khan. Khan. <laughs> uh, I forgot the late Barra Brian Marshall was in The Long Good Friday. Marshall starred with Jenny Agatha in I, I Start Counting. Nice psychological thriller about the serial killer. Ah. Good old Jenny Adica. Yeah, she's another one that went shower scenes a lot. Star Trek for the Voyage Home all the way since she brought up Trek Dance. <laughs> right, here we go. So the guy comes in after the race. This is Mr. Shand. Yes, that was it. Denzel from Only Force and Horses was in this. He's nude for the whole time, just holding his cock and balls in his hands. 60 grand in that case. So that... I'm guessing this wouldn't... Maybe it would have stopped them. So, yeah. we check out the notes. <laughs> Massive twenty pound notes about this big. Yeah, he's also in the full Monty. So he's used to being naked. So he's drinking Moe. Here we go. So shotgun blast of the two guys, and then yeah, they shoot their own guy as well, and then send the two out the window. And then one gets run over by a stock car, who then crashes and goes on fire because oh, and then another stock car runs over a body, piles into the other car, and because they're eighties cars, they blow up. Paul Barber, there you go. Ask him. So then now it's a fucking war. I don't know how he thought this would be a good idea. But then we got this the amazing scene coming up at the Savoy. <laughs> this is why it's his next and an 18. Yeah, it's still an 18 on here. This time it's war. Hey, good day playing down and that. Good Saturday. So, yeah, he leaves poor Helen Mirren on her own in the car with a driver. Then he goes to upstairs to see the Americans, but they're always leaving. So then he has a go at them for being cowards. What does he say? I, New York Mafia. I shit them or something like that. <laughs> Apparently so. They just blew up on their own accord. Normally they blow up after going off a cliff, but before hitting anything. But here we go. The Americans. The Norwegians are leaving. The Norwegians are leaving. A little problem. <laughs> Uh, anyone else think that Rife Fine should start on a remake of Rising Damp? I watched the menu recently. <laughs> he definitely, he definitely looks like Riz, Rigsby these days. <laughs> He'd probably do it as well. Oh, Miss Jones! <laughs> Did he actually say it that much? I was too offended to watch it these days. Oh, here we go. It turns around. I'll tell you something. <laughs> what was the car? Famously had a fuel tank right at the back, so the car, if you got re-ended, it would just blow up. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I bet I think there is one, isn't there? Ah, oh, my hair. Uh, my daughter's friends thinks George is shit. <sighs> Disown them both. She can go and live with her friend. Uh, 
<laughs> They're wrong. Exactly. They obviously weren't fucking. Were they on their phones the whole time? Because that's what my son's like. He doesn't pay attention. Just. Ah. Oh, I ask everyone this: which is better, Ter Aliens or Terminator Two? Ooh, shit. Oh, uh, well, Terrence has jumped in. But aliens. I'm going to go Terminator 2. Terminator 2, I'd watch more. <clears throat> Did I disappear for a second? <laughs> Doc, your daughter's friends are mad. Yeah. Kid, uh, well. What is that that poll I did the other day where I said what percentage of kids would actually uh, care about movies that are under twenty or under eighteen? And most people said about seventy five percent of the kids under twenty don't care about films, which is true. Because you keep hearing these things up. Kids today don't like remakes and legacy sequels. Oh, here we go. So this is the big finish. So. Bob Hoskins goes past. Yeah, so his driver's dead. There's two men in the car with Ellen Mirren. That's the last we see of her. Now, there she goes. And then Pierce Brosnan's in the front seat, the passenger side, pointing a gun which at the left. But Bob Hoskins is actually sitting more in the middle to the right. But they never met each other because they filmed this on different nights. So obviously they filmed Hoskins at the front and then the next night they did. And they got the awesome score kicking. Oh, thank you, playing down under. So now this was apparently the first one of the first scenes shot. So they had Bob Hoskins sit in the cut back of this car. And the director would uh it was in the passenger seat, would tell Bob Hoskins exactly what was gonna happen for the whole film. So then he just filmed his reaction from the back seat. And because they couldn't cover up the audio. <laughs> That's why the music gets a lot louder here. <laughs> we get five minutes or something of this. With occasional Bob Hoskins, and then it ends. I see. Ford Pinto. Oh, Ford Pinto. There, that, I think I remember all the jokes about the Ford Pinto now. Oh, uh, i got to go. Best wishes. Take care, Terrence. Sorry, probably gone already. Terminator. I'm an old school prefer Alien and Terminator Originals. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see what the 4K for Terminator looks like. And then we get to see the future James Bond. Apparently the director... Oh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's either he was driving it, was he? But there we go. Um, we get do get a mention of uh, Vic Armstrong as one of the stunt people on this. So take care, Terence. And then yes, I'll be wrapping up now. We need a week, but the film is over. Special effects: Ian Wingrove, stunt coordinator Ron Alon. But then um, once the credits kick in. Uh, yes, eventually. Oh, shit, no, no, I just missed it. So, yeah, copyright 1979, handmade films, and there we go. Oh, cast and order appearance. Yeah, that's weird. That's the final titles then. Colin, Paul Freeman, Kevin McNally, Derek Thompson, Bob Hoskins, Ruby Head, Harold's mother. Every time they do something to improve the Terminator, it just annoys me. <laughs> that's why my VHS is the best. And then that's why you'll find out if... Where's it gone? Halloween is the best on VHS or not. Spoilers. I'm not going to tell you. But yeah, we'll see that tomorrow. Yeah, he was a great actor, Bob Hoskins. Ah, see, Captain Death is Roy Alon. Who was that then? Who is the stunt coordinator? Sherry is Gillian Tailforth. Uh, and uh, there it is, stuntman. But then we have uh, P. 
Pierce Brosnan is first Irishman and tried getting teen daughters involved with films. Hang on. <laughs> but they just view them with the same. I think, yeah, yeah I have this. It's actually same problem. Ten-year-old. Not interested in anything. Uh, he only plays Nintendo games. He loves those. Watches YouTube for hours. Watches Idiots. Um, on YouTube. With big enough channels than me. Uh, my, my eyes. I, I just want a good transfer of 1081 with the original mono mix from the laser disc. Ooh. Yes, people said how difficult it is to put a fucking mono track on a laser disc, uh, on a Blu ray or on a 4K. So, there we go. You can't improve after T2, exactly. Unless you polish it so there's no grain and <laughs> anything at all. Uh, I think some scenes in 4K ruin Halloween. Oh, well, you'll see in my. <laughs> what my VHS looks like. Halloween belongs on VHS, doesn't need a polish. Well, I'm hoping it might be just my version, but we'll see when you see the video. Yeah, mine just still has the stupid rework sound effects. I was thinking that earlier when I was watching Indiana Jones, I know I can sense or imagine every sound that's coming up. Like when the uh, truck flips over and blows up, I can hear that. And then if it's not right, I'll kick off. Mono! <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. But yes, indeed. So, Ah, impressed with the 4K of Evil Dead. There you go. Obviously, everyone's ignoring my videos. Mono for, <laughs> from Michael Myers. Yeah, you only need mono. You don't need stereo, even. I think this, no, this VHS is an older one. It's in hi-fi. Doesn't say if it's the stereo hi-fi, but I'm guessing so. Let's try an older one. Uh, older than a six. I've got nothing older now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got Halloween 3. Halloween 3, color, pal, English language. Okay. Uh, it's a Warner's tape, but it doesn't say... I don't know if it... Usually it says somewhere. Let's try this Friday Night 2. Hmm, I still think, yeah, I've been in touch with Tommy D. Wallace again. Almost snagged him last year. Right, let's wrap this up. So thanks, everyone, for giving up their Good Friday evening to spend it with me. Always welcome Michael Myers, Sean, playing Dan, and uh, Mike, the real fifth Beatle, Dr. Impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alphabet Cat. Welcome, welcome, and um, Terence. And what am I up next? I'm up. Oh, let's see. Must be mono, surely. I think I remember playing it before. It was mono. I think if it doesn't say stereo, it must be mono. But I'll just check one more. Nightmare on Street. But they probably put it in such a tiny writing you can't see it. Color, pal. Hi-Fi, it says. I don't think that counts as anything. And Jim. Of course, Jim was here. Halloween 3 is <laughs> Neon VHS. It's not the best picture, this one. It's very dark. But I think I got it in a collection, so I was very lucky. Half of the other ones I had to buy. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I'll see you later. So I'll see everyone Monday night for Live and Let Die. Ding. All right. Everyone, have a good one. Enjoy the weekend. Bye.